Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there. What is upper? Know everybody doing well? If you're new, namaste. Let's look at the market, see where we're at. It was kind of booming the past couple of days or so. Oh, yeah, 2.2 trillion. The market is doing really, really well today. Look at ETH. God, you think it's just been sitting at 3774 for just hours now. Cardano, $2.86. Bitcoin, 48738 Binance is doing well in the past 24 hours at $497.13. XRP at $1.23. Doge back up to $0.30 cents strong. Solana at $111. <sighs> More than $0.50. Cent, 50 cent, 50, 50 percent in the last week. Incredible guys. Let's 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 for this for the <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm um I you know I'm just a just an I you know I just watch I don't you know I just I'm just watching the markets just um what's I'm trying to say like I am a I'm just an observer, not a participant of course, just just an observer in, in the cryptocurrencies. No, I mean, for real, for me, you know, our education system here in America, public high school systems, for the most part, even though I was in magnet programs and all that, taught me nothing about how to make money. Um, well, I mean, not to how to make money, what to do with money once we got it or, you know, how to create that generational wealth. It, it had to become a education learn later after a lot of trial and error, which we'll get to all of that, the trials and the errors and the and uh also what i've learned to try to just make it almost can't say foolproof yeah foolproof basically if you follow through um but it takes time it's not quick overnight get rich quick you know there may be times where baby spurts and stuff but that's usually after years of planning and understanding opportunities to take um but learning the crypto market really helped me understand all the other financial markets because every a lot of the knowledge and understanding, once you get deep into it, you realize that once you understand the framework and the basics of one thing really well, and you learn how to apply it, you see the similarities in other avenues, and and you just have to maybe learn, like I say, I always say, like a different language, whatever the acronyms and the the, the terminology, but you just have to always put on that framework of something you know really well, and just woof go across the different um, areas. Not go stay here today uh, blabbering too much on, but because you know here, we're about to hit our positivity. And that positivity being, say something nice if you know somebody you love, respect, admire, that has opened up a door when it was cold out and you were freezing, and brought you into the heat and warmed you with hot chocolate or hot toddy or other things that of interest. <laughs> but the people would know me probably amazed that I can go this far without saying zero curse words or another word that I use as if it was the word smurf. <laughs> um, but if somebody in your life fits that description, say something nice about them down in the comment section and send them this video and say, hey, go look what I wrote about you. Um, I really, I really admire you, and you know, I wanted to put something that would last for all eternity throughout the internet. With that, let's roll on into a seven percent yield solution. What does this mean? Look, inflation is about four percent. That's a good number. What does that mean? That if you have a hundred dollars next year, your hundred dollars will be ninety-six dollars. In terms that inflation will eat up if you just put in a bank with with zero percent saving. I mean, I'm sorry if you just have it somewhere sitting in an account with no interest added. That hundred dollars will have the purchasing powers, and that's every year. Inflation is about four dollars. I'm sorry, four four percent in this day the states um, year annually. So that hundred dollars will be 
$96 next year in terms of his purchasing power. And if, if you've done nothing with it, so if you have $10,000, now you have 9,600, you know, and just put the numbers up. You can imagine how this becomes a problem if you had a million bucks somewhere, but next year you can only buy with it because inflation went up 960,000. So what do you do? Well, you want your money that's sitting there. Now, so for those, if you have some money that can do this, think of it as a small scale as you as you get bigger and bigger with your your income, you got to be smart about it. This is what you want to do. So this is something that may be for most of us some years down the line. But it's good to be understanding these these kind of um, what we're going to kind of run through real quick here. These um, kind of um, strategies in your head for the future. So. You want your money to make at least more than 4% a year. That way, you, you, so you just don't want your $100 to be $96 next year. You want your $100 to at least to be $100 next year. If it's $102, $103, hey, you know, now we're talking about money and you, you're not trying to want it to be $200 next year, you know, trying to, trying to double it to 10 times, 1000 That's other money that you added to this. This is where you're going to keep a stack of money that's going to pay you um, your pay your expenses in the future because of the dividend. So here they have a um, an ETF portfolio that right here offers diversification, risk mitigation, high yield. Many income seekers, including retirees, have resigned themselves to the fact that their portfolios may never generate the kind of dividends that they want them to. The 10 year treasuries and large caps yield less than 1.5 percent a year. So you go be some, you know, you're not beating that four that you need to beat. If you target longer term corporate bonds, high yield stocks, you may or not or high yield stocks, not really. You may be able to achieve three percent. Yield beyond that, you have to push further out into risk things such as RETs, um, master limited partnerships, emerging market bonds. You know, these are things that people will allow money. They don't they don't want to take much risk. They don't want to throw their money. I'm just going to go YOLO on Apple. You know, they're they're a little bit older. They don't want the fluctuations up and down. If there's a market, they want things that's going to be a lot more steady. So they're looking at at these 10 year treasuries and these things that not going to fall by percentage points in a, in a couple of weeks. So this um, these individuals talking about looking at ETFs that kind of mimic some of those some of the 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 risk portfolios or the the it mimics the the lack of of a real risk of some of those things we just talked about up there they only give you still like 1.5 percent and such and we'll talk about where you stash the emergency funds where to do it now this is even like you know throwing your money and you expect it to last for you know four or five years you're not thinking oh i'm gonna pull it out in a week or in, in two months and next year you know this is where we you putting your money to save Anyway, so this particular one, and, and like I said, not financial advice, not recommending anything. This is just understanding the, the at any point for anything. You so even stuff I say, hey, I'm doing myself, blah blah blah. That's for me. If you do it for you, that's on you. I mean, that's in medical advice. That's on advice on beekeeping. On advice on bee pollination, uh, murder hornet extermination, whatever it could be in this world, whatever you want. Thing. Uh, <laughs> so this particular ETF is looking at, um, I think, okay, so they have mostly, it starts with a core that replicates the NASDAQ, which is one of the indexes. So this is very, t uh, tech and growth heavy. The NASDAQ it does well when it does well and it drops when it drops, but the core of it is a NASDAQ. Then they have a layer with options calls. So in in this ETF, they have a core of it is being NASDAQ. Then they do options, trying to make bets on stuff in the midst of it. And also on the other side, as they gain on their options, they put puts in, which takes out risk. So they're trying to mitigate their risk while also um, tracking one of the major indexes. And in there, they're trying to get like a generate roughly 8% uh, distribution. And it's similar. So you can go down to JP Morgan has it, and everything has this where they 
you know, uh, generates income through a combination of selling options and investing in U.S. large stock, large cap stocks. And large cap is large market capitalization. As we talk about market capitalization is how much each individual stock is worth times the number of stocks that is issued, which gives the quote unquote value of the company like Apple and Microsoft are two trillion dollar companies because their price of their stock times the number of stock is greater than the number two trillion. So Apple is like 154 today. I think, um, oh, I meant to, I got to start showing some um, stock stuff or, or some numbers. We'll, we'll put together a list of ones we track. And uh, I believe Microsoft was like 300, it was like 290, so 300. I may be, it may, I don't know if it's still at that number. I haven't looked in several days. And that, you know, the number, how much it is, 300 per times however many they issue is over 2 trillion. So it invests in U.S. large market capitalization stocks seeking to deliver a monthly income stream from associated option premiums and stock dividends. So here, you know, these funds, if you got, as soon as you get the, your money start to grow, these ideas you want to have, you don't want to take too much risk, you know, take some of the money off the table, be smart. You know, you can still YOLO some things and, you know, it, it, don't be a degenerate gambler. gambler. <laughs> They're not the best to create generational wealth. There's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. Got to be smart. So. Uh, ooh, still 10 minutes in. I'm on that. Uh, where to stash your emergency fund from inflation This talks. OK, a lot about what we're talking about. So aside from your checking account. Is there a good place to put your emergency cash so it's not eaten up by rising inflation at 4%, which is probably going to be higher. I don't know exactly if it's going to be this year or probably in two or three years from all of the spending in the past two years. But it will go up at some point. Don't get it twisted. But interest rates are low. So, look, it used to be years ago. I worked at a bank um, and I remember people used to call. I was like, man, why are these people call and ask me these questions? And I didn't know to realize that they were putting together a pamphlet to send other people of interest rates, how much interest rates the banks were paying. And I, I worked at a I don't say a mom and pop one, but it was a local bank to the place I was at. It was not one of the major chains. I was a teller years ago. It was awesome. It was an interesting job. That's where I learned that Secret Service were the main individuals who were involved in counterfeiting. So they see that as protecting the president, protecting our money supply is the two most important things. The United States, remember that. And they used to be under the Department of Treasury, not in Department of Homeland Security. Anyway, the people, we were, the percentage of money market accounts, and I had no money at the time. I barely understood what I was, I just knew, I, I would grab the pamphlet, what we get here, where you can read off to the people calling on the phone, and you know, whenever somebody came in and started a money market account, I wasn't involved in all of that. I just was doing the little stuff up front. Money market accounts was like 5%, you know, 5.5%. You had to have like a minimum of $5,000 or 200 I was thinking like, I ain't got that much money. Who got money for this? <laughs> you know, when, you, when you're young. So what is an emergency account? Let's talk there. Uh, people say three to six months of your monthly expenses. So see how much you spend in a month. I would say even um, until you can, even if you things like rent or uh, don't even include that, because if you're desperate, if times are tough, you're not, you know, you got a couple months before eviction. So keep what's going to keep the family alive, food, power, water, you know, that is, I mean, if you can, but that don't include you go by the, you know, the cable and phone, but let's, let's say what's, what is it going to keep my family afloat if necessary or myself, if you know, you're just taking care of yourself or there's other people, whoever it may be, keep my unit, whatever that may be afloat during this period. So three to six months of imagine how much it is per month. And then you want to have that somewhere safe and what do you do with it? But it got to be liquid, meaning, it can't be somewhere set up where, oh, OK, I can access it in uh, a week or I can access it in 10 days. You know, it needs to be within that 24, 48 hour window, you know, on a, on a, on a you know, weekends, maybe 72 that can get things happening. Besides what you may keep like out, you know, just money having a checking account or a savings account. I guess my point of it is that you don't want to keep too much of your checking and saving account at any one time because you're not gaining interest on it. You know, some people will keep the majority of their money 
in savings or checkings account, scared to, to invest in the stock market, don't even understand uh, about uh, retirement accounts, and just never learned. So this is for understanding kind of where you want to put pieces of the pie. So, you know, money that you can, can survive. You know, once you have an emergency fund set up, then you can have more money in other places. But until that, I would say that happens. And I'm going to show you, you know, literally where, I, you know, I think I put mine in, you know, for me. And, you know, and I explain what I think my thought process is on it. But, you know, um, and, and, and by the grace of God, I haven't had to dip into emergencies in, in a long time. So even now where I've set up an emergency, I haven't had to use it. So, you know, <laughs> I would <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Anyway. You want to have it somewhere. So. As you start to say, you begin, let's just let's just use, use your number. Say if you you find your expenses in a month are um, once you get to the bare bones with no housing and nothing, you know, not worrying about the housing, just food, gas, any, any bills that, you know, have to take care of, like, you know, insurance, car insurance, you know, you, you know, you got a couple months of car note before they can come repo you. But let's just say car note on there, too. Let's say this is a thousand dollars. Let's just say and for just easy purpose, a thousand bucks. So you say, all right, I need somewhere between three thousand, six thousand, somewhere safe that I, if necessary, I can get to to keep to tie me over until I can figure out what's going to be the next step. Right. And say, you know, and I'm just saying you, these are, you know, I'm using just super general numbers. So more you can most you can save in a month is to say, you know, like a hundred. So it's gonna take some time to get up there, right? And you may have like two or three hundred already. So you go say, what I do with this, and as I get my hundred and stuff ready, besides what I keep out. That's where you want to put that money. That's not gonna just sit there. And and now you got three hundred, and it, you know you've been putting a hundred in a month, hundred. So it's been a year now. You almost had a thousand dollars. You don't want that to be nine hundred and sixty dollars. You want it to be a thousand, if not just a little bit more at that point, right? And you're a little bit younger. You're not. A, you're not. You know. You know. This is in your. You know. Whenever you. You. You know. I'm not gonna put an age on it. But whenever you're building it, but this is not money that you feel like. Okay. I. I, I need to put it in a gold bars because it's got to be something that. Um, you know. I'm not taking zero risk on. And gold bars are not zero risk either. But. Everything is risk. You can't just if leaving it sitting there is risk. You losing four percent. That's risk. So everything is risk. At the end of the day, it's just which risk, the smart risk to take. High yield saving accounts give you about 0.5 to 0.6 percent. Money market accounts give you. And this is what I was talking about. Give you 0.6 percent now. They were five percent back when I was doing this in the late 90s, early 2000s. We were paying. Five, and you had to have like a deposit, usually like two, uh, 2500 or 5000 but they were paying 5% annually on your money. Now they're paying 0. 0.6. That's nowhere near 4%. You can't do a money market. And CDs, you, you, your money's locked up for months. Some of them, they, and these used to pay like, like 6, 7, 8, 9%. Now they're paying 1%. You can find some for 0.7 for one year terms or up to 1% APR for two year terms. That doesn't help either. What do I do? I use M1 Finance. I don't know if you heard of it, but it's um, it's called, oh, you can't see the whole top of it, but M1 Finance. I don't, I'm not, I don't know these people. I'm not endorsed. I don't, you know, have nothing. I don't have no links down yet. Um, to say link, I'm just telling you what, literally what I do. And this is why I do this, because not only if your money you put in there, they pay 1%, but once you get past, they say now 5,000, used to be 10,000. Once you get past $10,000, you can borrow against your own money. Well, I don't know what this five, because it used to be 10, so maybe they went down to five, nine percent but whatever it is. So let's just say it's five. It was 10 when I thought it was, but maybe it's five now. Maybe they changed it. I don't pay too much attention to the emails. Like I said, I haven't had to use it. Um, you had to pay $125 a year. I think I got paid like 
hundred first or whatever, but it's one hundred twenty five dollars a year. So that has to be, you know, calculate that and if it's going to be smart for you. But for me, this is where it was genius at. <laughs> and I wouldn't even because I invest all of it. So for you know, I was using it for investing, and then I understood it later as I had it. Said, oh, I can because I like the wheels where you can pick a wheel. But that's a story for another time. But when I understood this other, this plus thing that they were discussing, I said, oh, that could be my emergency account. That's genius. Because say if you got $5,000 in there, you can borrow. So, you know, say you got $5,000 in stock. You, you said, hey, I love Apple and Microsoft. I got half and half. I got half Apple, half Microsoft. It's been making money for me. They've been going up. They both pay dividends. I'm enjoying that. So I got 5,000, now my 5,000 to say 5,100 because they went up, right? So I already got um, like 5% appreciation just from the stock market. And if I needed the money, if I needed that money, that my emergency money, I can borrow that money from myself, not sell my stock. They keep my stock, they keep my Apple, they keep my Microsoft, it still goes. I can take out like a third of whatever I put in. So if I put in you know, let's just say 6,000 now. I could take out 2,000 of that. I can take that out at a 2% rate and pay it back. And if I, I guess if I don't pay it back, they'll just, they'll sell my stock, get their money back. And, we, you know, we settle up that way. But, you know, I, and, and I think it's like an unlimited time to pay back. I just have to pay 2% over the time that I take to pay back. So I was like, that's that's the best of all worlds. Because, you know, if it's an emergency, it should be an emergency. And hopefully it's not lasting forever. And if it did, then I got to sell all this stuff anyway. But if it's just an emergency and I just needed some money that I didn't have sitting out, whatever I have in my M1 finance, I can then borrow against it, pay it back, and not even have to sell the stuff that I had, you know? So that's why I said for me, this is what I use, but, you know, a little bit behind the thought process, behind the scene, whatever I'm be going through my head. Um, moving on, the SEC hints at a Bitcoin futures. Uh, Gary Gensler signals he's open to a pathway for approval. This is, is not much in that. So it's just some, a thought that we're going to start getting hyped up with the next level stories. Uh, yesterday was a bit of a, not now I'll say, you know, it has some more of the looking at the 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 dark side, not the, even the dark side of crypto, but things that are out there that you will hear and you, you have to be aware of. You can't sit there and just want to, you know, be Pollyanna about the future. You got to understand, like I always try to understand what exactly, it, you know, I'm a, a student of Sun Tzu. That's one of my teachers, one of my mentors who I probably need to say something nice. Now, I, I'm going to start doing that every day. I'm going to put something nice about somebody in the comment section and, um, I'm going to get it started and, and then um, get it cracking like that. So if I know you personally, then you may see something I write about you down there as well. <laughs> um, sounds to one of my mentors. You have to know your enemy as well. You know yourself. So you any plan, whenever I work or with people and I'll say, you know, what you want to do next? And we talk about, say, all right, now think about some why that won't work. You know, and, and really you got to be that's where you really got to learn to be honest and say you can you can fake it and not and not really find the truth of things. Or you can say, you know what, let me really try to pick apart everything I think is going to work and look for weaknesses. And, 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 you know, a lot of times you don't find nothing and you're like, OK, wow, this is bulletproof or bullet resistant or. You say, oh, wow, this is a this is something that can go wrong. I need I need to correct this or figure something else out. So that's how you got to be at all times. I always say look for play devil's advocate. Look for ways that things go wrong. So yesterday we looked at those things. Today we're looking at way more positive stories. Speaking of which, crypto related job postings grow 118 percent amid rising blockchain adoption. So it's just a lot of information from some job um I believe this was a da -da -da -da, data provided by Finbor cryptocurrency translator indicates that uh, software development had a higher share of crypto and blockchain job postings management jobs human resources marketing and finance it's just a lot of growth in the market 
but a drop down a little bit from last year in some parts. In other parts, marketing is going up, management is going up, IT operations and help desk, sales, accounting. So it seems like last year a lot of software development was getting started. You know, it's still, the, you know, the vast majority of it. But <clears throat> now you're starting to see the fleshing out of the operations, as you would expect. As you would expect. And they say, like, you know, some challenges. So if you know people who are into coding software or you're thinking about an interest, I say definitely start to play around. You'd probably be surprised at how good you are. It's puzzle. A lot of it's puzzle solving. Newer platforms looking at like no coding software where you, you, you'll be able to just kind of type in your thoughts and work with the, the artificial intelligence to create your ideas. So a lot of ways to get involved, you know, think outside the box. As we were saying, I believe it was yesterday, talking about do something new. Say, hey, I, you know, I'm teaching my sons coding, um, you know, learning that and, and bought, a, bought some raspberry pies and using YouTube and Working our way and trying to just be, be, learn and, and, and make new different things. Raul Paul, who is a very vocal cryptocurrency advocate. I think he's fairly new to the game, but, you know, hey, I'm, I'm with it. He's predicting that Bitcoin is going to be between 250000 to 400000 by next year. Now, was he, he saying this and he now um, has more Ethereum than Bitcoin and he thinks uh, Ethereum is going to reach 20,000. I don't know where he's predicting getting these numbers from. So, you know, we got to take everything with a grain of salt. But Ethereum is doing really well because, like I said, that protocol and the ETH burn and I haven't pulled that up yet. Sorry. Um. He's just, I guess, looking at kind of looking at the past and looking forward. But if you want to listen to somebody, Tim Draper here. In 2014, he was on, I think he was on what? Oh, Fox Business News, 2013. Called it a really interesting currency in 2013. And in 2014, he shared a prediction that I'm still predicting 2014. I'm predicting that Bitcoin will reach. I don't know. That's how you talk. I'm bullying, but. $10,000 per bitty. Now, you can't say bitcoins, but bitty is fine. Because your boy made that up. Who's your boy? You know you know who that, who that is. 10000 per bitty in three years. So three years in 2014, 2017, which, you know, was, was a little bit spot on there, Mr. Draper. The thesis, Bitcoin is a hedge against global currencies, a way to send global currencies with ease. So it works. It Bitcoin facilitates. It's the facilitator for the currencies. And now the currencies have their facilitator. They can grow and evolve to new currency. It's like energy. So at the time, it was 413 bucks. And he said it'd be 10 G's. So if you if you had put a thousand in, this was our call. You put a thousand in, you'd have got two two Bitcoin, two point two Bitcoin, which would be worth now, you know, close to one oh six, one oh seven. Bitcoin's a little bit more. So about one oh eight right now, or something like that. One oh nine. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? If you ain't in the game, what you gonna do? Still probably go 10x from here, but this ain't financial advice. If not, 100x. 100x would be, just remember, $1 trillion market cap. Now, that's way past gold, but it's also accounted for a lot of foreign government and corporate, private, public and private corporations and family offices, their funds, you know. Gold don't have all of that market cap. Just 10xing, baby, from here. Man, imagine your money 10xing. Bitcoin tipping services will be activated on Twitter accounts. Now, look, I'm not on Twitter, but I may get on Twitter now. You can already tip people, uh, tip people money on Twitter, it seems. They said it's a feature and option for Bitcoin tipping. 
just like they have along with Cash App, Venmo, and other major payment service providers. Bitcoin will be added to the list of payment options. So I guess you can already tip on Bitcoin. You know, I'm look, I'm late to the party. I mean, you know, I guess I've been a little bit because I'm... I run my mouth and like I said, I'm, you know, don't, don't get it. Don't, don't, as we say, don't, don't get it twisted. I can get reckless out here and that may not be the best thing. So, um, probably is good that I haven't been on these years. No, I, you know, especially it seemed like everybody was the wild west. Now everybody looking back like, oh my God, you said this five years ago. You, you said this as a teenager. Oh, you, you I think. I, I don't think you should ever be able to work anywhere ever. <laughs> you know, come on. Certain things, yeah, hundred percent. You know, we you got to ride on that. But a lot of this stuff is ridiculous. So, but Bitcoin being added, you know, Jack. We talked about how much Jack loves Bitcoin. So doesn't doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, according to the post by Mac Rumors, there might be some insight that the application will provide its user with a Bitcoin Lightning Network, which will be used to facilitate the payments. It's also mentioned that to successfully and easily generate, this seems like it was written by AI, it doesn't barely make sense, generate Bitcoin Lightning invoices, the Lightning Network payment gateway Strike will be used. You know, so you know, no, Strike is, is, is Strike public or is it still private? I have to look it up. Strike is one of those payment behind the scene payment operation um, payment processing companies behind the scenes. And it may still be private. Something to look at, but things that things to keep an eye on. Dude, I knew about Palantir years ago. Years ago. So, you know, almost whispered about in ways. You know, I'm getting into that weird uh cutting edge research stuff and so when they were saying you know i was joking like oh please spacex and pilots go public <laughs> and then palantir went public for like seven bucks if you're an accredited investor we need to talk about what accredited investors and equity lending means at some point uh, now palantir is trading like 25 26 bucks it came out as savvy it came Seven dollars pre IPO prices, then it came IPO like 11, dropped down to nine, and now it's like 20, 20. It went up to like close to 38, 40 at some point, and it's down to 20 something. Palantir, and, and its market cap, I think, is less than 100 billion. Palantir is a trillion dollar, if not two to three, four or five trillion dollar company. So, you know, like I said, no advice, but that's just how I see things. I'll tell y'all, the, the, the companies I look at, they be like, oh, yeah, man, I expect these to do super well in this new future. So, and I ain't been disappointed now. Like I said, you know what I mean? If you were able to get in pre-IPO prices or even if you got in at the IPO or even if it dropped after the IPO, you know, you more than doubled your money. So, not going to keep you out too long to that. With that said, I love you. You love you, God loves us, and that's all that matters.